Hey, so this morning I'm out here at Lake Medina. Um, <coughs> excuse me, got a little bit of a cough, but uh, we're gonna have a badass sunrise this morning, so I wanted to get over here. I was planning on going to uh, Buckeye Woods, but uh, I know that the sunrise over the lake here is pretty cool, so I'm gonna walk in a minute, but you gotta see, like we're just off Route 18 for those of you guys who don't know where Lake Medina is, but it's so cool, like the town, I mean, you're in nature, but you're not. That's what I love about Medina so much is we are all over all the all the county park system here. They're scattered all over, and there's places, I'm sure like a lot of communities, but I know Medina, um, but these communities are so cool because uh, we have the ability to get out in nature, and uh, man, I've been getting out here twice a day. I've been getting some great workouts in. I've already got my uh, half a gallon of water in, so the rest of the day should be pretty easy. Um, Steve Shields kicked my friggin' butt this morning uh, with the with maybe one of the worst workouts I've done in a while. Um, I thought I would puke, but I didn't. So anyway, I'm going to walk west a little bit, so that way that awesome sunrise is right behind me. But... Um, what I wanted to talk about, and I don't know why, but I wake up early in the morning, typically. <laughs> um, sometimes in the past when I was lazy, I would lay there and I would fall back asleep and I'd always feel like crap. So now when I wake up, I get up. Um, this morning I woke up like 3.40, somewhere around there. And I didn't get up, but I wanted to make sure I kept my mind awake. Um, so what popped in my head was Sears School. And I, I have a good friend on here who's actually a Sears School instructor. So I know he's a dirty bastard because it is, uh, it's a, it's the craziest school I've ever heard of. You, you have to sign a waiver. They're allowed to hit you. And the first time they hit you, you kind of can't believe that they just hit you, but it's POW training. And by the end of it, I really thought I was a POW. Like I was like, something went wrong and this school is broken and we're stuck in the PDR as they called it. But, um, anyway, some of the cool lessons I learned there. I went there 19 years old and I was super patriotic. I got to meet Doug Hedgegall who was uh, in the Hanaway Hilton. Um, the guy's a brilliant mind. Um, but I learned so much about myself and uh, the endurance of the human mind. And, and I've, I've forgotten about those things. But the cool thing I talk a lot about, sorry, I keep looking away because I mean, just look, this is why I like to come out here. Look at that. Where do you get views like that? Let me get my ugly face out of here. I'll take a still shot of that later. Anyway, squirrel. Um, most of my, when I talk about these um, these situations where I've learned something, I, and it's, I said it took three decades, there's some lessons here that I learned immediately, and uh, they were pretty cool. One is, I don't like to be hungry. And for the nine days of the school, you're hungry. They run a lot of classes through this course, and it's in uh, Warner Springs, California. And it's hot in the day, and it's freezing at night, and you don't have any... I mean, they basically set you up like you're behind enemy lines. Ooh, very slippery right there. Um, anyway, on to... Um, there's all this... They teach you some survival skills. You eat a lot of grasshoppers and mustard green seed, whatever. Tree bark I tried, all the shit that they say you can live on. You might can live on it, but I can't. So um, I, I was starving. My teeth got loose from losing so much weight there. And I think it popped in the mouth a couple times. But uh, anyway, pretty crazy school. But here, here was some takeaways. One is, like I said, I learned how to, how to deal with my mind. Because you're alone a lot in those situations. And that's what they wanted you to feel was alone. And they wanted to teach you different things about coping um, and how to survive that situation. Because that's the key. You know, all these people think that um, you're supposed to name, rank, and serial number and don't give any information. And that's what gets you killed. So uh, that's not the point of the story. Um, it, was, it was the point of the school. But a few things I learned is um, some resiliency, some self-resiliency. Um, and very quickly... I learned that, again, back to perception um, and perception being reality. I was, I never knew I would or could be claustrophobic, but apparently I was a little bit claustrophobic because when they went to put me in a box, and if you saw this box, there's no way that a human person could fit in this box, but they fit you in this freaking box. And the box is double walled and it is completely blacked out. 
and they lock the box. Well, when they went to put me in the box, I came out of there. Uh, I was a Sam in the box. I popped out of there and they said, oh, and they called me the little one because back then I was small. And they said, oh, the little one doesn't like the box. So right then I knew that if they knew I didn't like that box, that was going to be my personal torture. And so I said, no, I just twisted my ankle wrong and I forced myself inside that box and I did some breathing techniques to stay in the box because I needed them to think that the box was no big deal for me because the scariest thing that was there for me was that friggin' box being locked down in that box. I mean, you can't move your body is squeezed in there. Like, <laughs> like you can't believe, but they do some crazy interrogation techniques and some of it's classified. So I won't get into a whole bunch of it, but what I will say is the, the way they interrogate you is they, they have hard cells and soft cells and they really do beat the shit out of you um, to a degree. But uh, what I learned about myself was the hard stuff, I was like, bring it. I had a mind that was hard enough that I was like, they can't hit me hard enough. And then they hit me and I was like, wait, that was a little bit too fucking hard. But um, my mind was more like, I knew what I was there for, and I knew I. They, nobody really tells you a lot of the stories, but uh, you're not supposed to tell the guys going behind you because you want them to get the full effect. But uh, what I learned was um, the 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 worse they treated me, the better I did. Where I really fucked up is when they treated me, and these are my enemies in the school. These are my enemies. The better they treated me the worse I did. And there's something called a soft sell. And again, I won't get into too many of the specifics, but they did some things that were very nice. And now I've been, I'm dehydrated. I'm super hungry. Um, I've been sleep deprived for about a week and a half. Um, you, you've lost a ton of weight. You, ha you haven't showered, I mean showered. You haven't, you haven't even, you, you haven't even given yourself a whore bath in you know a week and a half so um it's 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 like pretty pretty grimy you're in a facility they call it we're naked half the time and they're humiliating you um i mean they really are humiliating you i remember walking around with my uh my war criminal number was two zero and i'll never forget it and it was cold at night and they would throw ice water on you and uh if you guys can imagine george costanza and the shrinkage um the shrinkage episode that's pretty much what happens. And, uh, you're around, you know, I think we had about 60 men in our class. So, so anyway, it's just the whole thing was such a mind fuck. And the nicer they were to me, the more information I gave up. And in life, I start to think about that and I go, stop taking the easy road. Like sometimes when things are so easy or someone is giving you information that you want to hear, doesn't make it true. And, uh, I'm kind of going through a situation right now where people were very not, someone was telling me things I wanted to hear, but they weren't true. And I allowed myself, even though I should have been more skeptical and uh, a lot smarter, I allowed myself to believe some of those things. And, and I put myself in a situation because of it. Now that's on me. But uh, not on them. Um, I, I think they knew what they were doing to a degree. Maybe they didn't. But uh, th I don't have any ownership of their their motivations or their issues. I can only control myself. So um, that was that was like my big thing this morning that I was thinking about is how to uh, kind of like this whole uh, embrace the suck that I'm I'm kind of living right now because I, I think the harder that you can make your life in your mind, that's not the right way to say it. Let's say. Um, the, the more you can harden up your mind, the better you'll be. And, uh, you, you can kind of prepare and, and expect a lot of things right now. My, uh, right now I'm, I'm experiencing a lot of, um, a lot of emotion and, and things because of, because my life is changing, uh, dramatically and almost overnight. But, uh, with that, I take back to those kind of things. Um, the Sear school, there are a lot of other schools, a lot of other opportunities I had to learn. Some I learned from then and some I didn't, but, uh, the last thing I'll, I'll say about Sears school is it also taught me that, um, tough men cry. At the very, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. 
at the very end of the school, well, but let, let me tell you, by the way, we had Navy SEALs in the class. We had scout snipers in the class. We had reconnaissance Marines in the class. We had some bad motherfuckers in that class and they were tough as nails. And, uh, at the very end, I told you it's a mind fuck. I really believed that I was a fucking prisoner of war somewhere and some shit went wrong. So, um, you're like crazy sleep deprived and I'll give you, I'm going to, I'll put it in the comments. I'm going to put a poem, uh, a poem by Sir, uh, Roger Kipling, who, who wrote, uh, a poem called Boots, and they play this thing for you for about seven hours, and it, it is mind-numbing. But anyway, um, I was, here's the other thing that I want to talk about, and that is Misery Loves Company, and that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, Misery Loves Company. And I want to get rid of the stupid way that people think about Misery Loving Company. Misery Love Company to, Loving Company to me means brothers, sisters, people, whatever, if they're in the same misery, together, that's how we overcome things. It doesn't mean I want to drag you down. It means if I look to my left or to my right and someone's in that same misery with me and we're persevering, then, then I win. So, uh, that's the misery loves company, but here's the misery loves company in Sears school. So I looked around in that class and I thought everybody in there was tougher than me, harder than me, bigger than me, stronger than me, older than me, wiser than me. And, uh, to a degree, probably some of that was true. But uh, the very last day, it, it goes haywire. And they pull everybody out of their facilities, and they get you in a formation, and they all have their AK-47s out. And it's scary. I mean, these guys are, I mean, by this time, you're, you're really, you're in the mindset. They've, it's the craziest thing I've ever experienced. But I was like, we're about to get killed. I mean, that's what they were saying. They were going to line us up and shoot us. So... <laughs> kind of funny <laughs> i'm 19 years old and i'm looking around and i'm like with all these guys and we're, we're like we're all about to die and they i saw it in their face they knew i mean they, like these guys were where i was and it was the and it was the first time i really understood misery loves company because they were with me <clears throat> they understood it so anyway they, they, they like this shit's about to go down and all of a sudden they play the uh wow i didn't didn't think I'd get this emotion. One second. <clears throat> if anybody doesn't know I'm a patriot, <laughs> you don't know me. And this is why the national anthem probably uh, makes me cry just about every time I hear it. And why that kneeling bullshit doesn't work for me. But anyway, on, on back on track. They play the national anthem, they raise the American flag, and they tell us we've been liberated. And I started crying like a baby. And after I had kids, I, I cried. I never cried before I had kids. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I didn't have a cry switch. But that day I was crying and tears were streaming down my cheeks. And I, I was ashamed for a second and I said, Jesus Christ, what is wrong with me? What? I'm a man here and I'm crying. And I looked right to the right of me, and there's this Navy SEAL, and he was a tough son of a bitch. And I don't know why he hadn't been to SEER school earlier in his career, but he'd been a Navy SEAL on a team for several years. And uh, so he wasn't like whew, he wasn't like some new guy. So I saw him, and he wasn't – tears weren't streaming down his face. He was sobbing. His shoulders were racking back and forth. Sorry. Anyway, I will never forget what it's like to be with other people who are sharing your misery or have that understanding, that brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever it might be. Um, and when you go through things like that with people, those are your people. I'll never see that guy again. I never saw him again. Um, but... I guarantee you that that left an impact on his life pretty much the same way it did mine. So my point here is, I'm going to talk about this big time tomorrow, but the misery loves company thing. But my point is, 
resiliency is what you make it. Get rid of this fucking negative hanger-ons. Um, that's not even a word. I don't know what I was trying to say there, but get get rid of that shit. Um, and stop believing everything that you hear. Like I said, the harder things have been for me, somehow the better they get. So, um, I don't know. That was my point. I had no idea I was going to go this this long. Uh, and I didn't know I was going to... I was just going to talk about Sears School because it was a pretty interesting course. But uh, my hands are almost frozen off because... Well, because I'm an idiot and I left my gloves in my truck. But uh, I'm done. I hope you guys all have a great day. Um, by the way, 17... I wrote it up there. You guys can see it. It's not 17. Whatever the days are, you can see. Sober, 75 hard, and chasing my rainbow. So I hope everybody has a great day.